was the thing that actually did the job of a video chat. And you might have even seen it on the occasional TV programme. It wasn't brilliant, but it was really cheap. It was the cost of a phone call. It wasn't any, but you had to have a phone at both ends. So that was when it all started, when we had first had video chat realistically. And now look at what we've got. We've got lots of different opportunities here. And you might recognize some of these, uh, you may not. Um, uh, you Apple people will have FaceTime installed. Uh, WhatsApp is everywhere on phones. A lot of people love it. Skype is also everywhere as well, as is the Google Hangouts, which is um, also part and parcel of it. Chat B is something interesting I put in there because I'm a bit of a fan. It, it actually has no service. You just go there, you tell someone the website you've gone to at Chat B, and then they go there and that's it. There's no software, no nothing. You just go straight there with a the web page. And then there's Zoom. So Zoom is what we're going to be talking about. And you can see we've got some uh, uh, parts and parcels of what Zoom's been used on. So you can see the little robot there and a phone. That's the Android phone. There's an Apple iPad and a laptop. You'll basically find Zoom everywhere on every device you can think of and every uh, permutation of that combination. So it, the, the interfaces are different sometimes, the buttons are different, but the, the words and the terms that we're talking about today are all very similar and the process is all the same. Okay, a glossary, magic words. Right, I'm, uh, I don't normally like to read out what's going on on the, on the, uh, on the screen, but I will do. Um, so I'm going to start with the chat option, and this is like SMS, uh, you know, messaging service on your phone. You can actually chat to other people in Zoom, and you can just send a message directly to a person or to everyone. The video and audio toolbar buttons, these are our biggest friend and enemy because they are the things that let us be seen and not be seen. They are switches. So I'll be coming to them in a minute. The meetings are what we have. This is a meeting we're in now. This is a Zoom room where we're all together. And there is a host. And the host is the person who sets up the meeting, sends the invite out and presents themselves to you um, and join, welcomes you in via the waiting room. Now, the waiting room is a security aspect to make sure that the host knows who's coming into the meeting because um, there was a spate of what they call Zoom bombings and un unpleasant people were coming into Zoom meetings that were wide open and then doing all sorts of unpleasant things. And that's really just not on. It, it, it's really upsetting and it's not. And, and you start to wonder what on earth is going on. So the waiting room is a way that people can come in and uh, be known, be, be known to be to be there. And also, what was set up was the meeting meeting ID and password passcode. So the passcode is relatively new, but the meeting ID is the meeting room number, as it were. It's the room. It's the place to go. So if you went to a building you'd be given a room number to go and meet others. You would then get to the room and you would have a key to get in. And that's effectively the meeting ID and the passcode. So then when you're in the meeting, we have two ways of viewing everyone. And there's a gallery view and there's a speaker view. Now the speaker view is one big screen one person at a time and that and the com and the computer and the software work to just present the person who is speaking at the time now if a lot of people are talking all at once the screen flickers between everyone it doesn't know who to present who's actually talking at the time to present so what you can also do is do the gallery view where all you get a little wall of pictures everyone's video all stacked up together i think uh, someone's called it like the brady bunch if you've ever watched the the, the tv program 
So that's a lot of the sort of attitude, like the words and the terms that we talk about when we're using Zoom. And they help when you're actually working with this. So um, we're going to move on. I'm, I'm assuming that everyone's happy with that. And uh, yeah, okay. So when you start with your, now, now like I said, you've got phones and tablets and computers. Now, computers don't have a phone attached to them generally. Um, but what you can do with a phone or a tablet, a smartphone, is use it to dial into Zoom as well. So this is, this is worthwhile mentioning right now that Zoom doesn't just let you do video, and, video, which is pictures and audio. You can phone in, you can just phone in. When an invite is created, there is a whole bunch of phone numbers in there for you to phone in if you just have a phone a landline even. I, uh, one of my clients, she phones in to her prayer meetings via the phone. She doesn't have a computer yet. I've been trying to get her to have a computer for over, over 10 years, but she phones in and she listens, she joins in with her prayer, prayer group, but via a landline. So what, when you start your device, uh, when you start your meeting rather, on with a tablet or a phone, it wants to know if you're dialing in or using the internet audio. And that's, the internet audio is pretty much the one that you want to select every time. To do so otherwise, you will create difficulties for yourself. Okay, moving on. And then the next part. So, when you're in and you've got your audio set up, you've got these controls these video and audio buttons. And this is what we talk about all the time. The button look, looks like a microphone and the button that looks like a video camera. They're a bit stylized, and, but nonetheless, that's what they do look like a little bit. And the logic is a bit weird. When you see it says mute, it means turn off your mic. Right, it, it mute is to turn off your mic microphone. When it's you see the button that says stop video, that's the option to stop your video. It's it's a bit of a strange logic for many. It, it's like what's, what what does that mean? So you can see here there's a cross next to the items where it's uh, where it's got a line through them, and that means both are turned off. Now you can turn either one off. Um, at your choosing and it's 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 sometimes polite to turn off your audio when you're having a chat with someone in the room so that what happens in the meeting that your conversation doesn't bleed into our conversation online and also you can turn off your video if you feel that um the you need to just sort of have a moment to yourself because watching yourself is actually quite hard work. There are other ways of doing this, but I'm, I'm going to keep to a very simple, simple way of doing things at the moment. Now, um, what's also useful with turning off your video is that um, when we have variable internet connections, sometimes it's easier just to have the audio. And turning off the video, to sort of freeze up things a little bit and makes it a bit easier. Admittedly, we get faced with a blank, with a black screen, but um, there are ways around that. You can actually insert a profile picture onto Zoom itself via the, the Zoom website. So you can have something that's there instead, something to look at. I've got a picture of me in um, Elvis Presley pose, doing a doing class at the time because I thought it was quite amusing. So there's, these are the things that we've just got to be aware of. The, and what happens is when you're using a touch screen, you've got to touch the screen to bring up these, these tools. Otherwise what happens is they disappear 
uh, while the video goes on. I think this is what gets a lot of people. And um, what you've got to do, the, on different devices, on an iPad, I think they're at the top, on an Android device, they're at the bottom. So what you should do is if you press the screen once, you look at the top of the screen and you scan the top. If you can't find them, it'll disappear. You press it again and then you scan the bottom. Just scan the top and the bottom and just take your time and just be aware that those are the things you're looking for. Moving on. Right. Um, this is also maybe not as much uh, of, of, a, of a need for yourselves, but um, I'm more interested in the, in the aspect that you can actually have a chat. There's a little button in the main settings that actually gives you this. You can actually... I think it's worth mentioning at this point in time where Zoom comes from and why it is what it is. Uh, it's a, a lot of these video chatting software, this are all for corporates and businesses. And they're the ones who do these conference calls. And what it is that it's become so easy to use Zoom that it's come over into the other parts of um, people's lives because it's so easy to deliver a yoga session, a qigong session, this session. It's just very, very simple for people to join in. Whereas with a Skype session, doing lots of people together, it's a little bit of a chore. It's really about phoning one person up and having a chat. WhatsApp, you can actually have a, have a friendly chat as well with lots of people, but that is, involves a little bit of knowledge. So this is about being able to actually come along to meetings that you wouldn't normally come to. So the chat option is there when you go to a meeting and what it is, it's a bit like yourselves now. The, you, you're all muted, but you could chat to one another, sending each other little messages saying, this Paul, he just doesn't seem to shut up, does he? Um, and, you know, and so on. So... Um, I'm going to move along this. I'm, I'm going to, this is only, oh, I've had a bit of a, right. Um, oops. I'm going to come back a second. Right. So this is some things you can do. And um, let's have a look. Right. Okay. So, um, oh, and um, so these are the, um, things that are worthwhile knowing about using Zoom well and having, have a, uh, getting the best out of it. You can see some of the things are like making sure that you're not too brightly lit from one side because, like I've said with a few people, that it makes you look like you're on the run. Um, you have also, sometimes you need, it, it's good that if you have the setup with the headphone and microphone, you'll be able to hear it and speak a lot easier. Um, sometimes you may, um, if, if it's a shared situation, then maybe that's not appropriate. And maybe to have, uh, if, if your device is good enough, then fair enough. But if not, sometimes you can plug in uh, an external speaker. Talk to me about external speakers another time. Um, so um, what else? Yes, you can turn off your video, like I say, um, or you can actually hide it in the meeting if you really need to. And someone's just taken up my advice of having a drink nearby. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that was one as well. So uh, you, what happens is it's uh, in these meetings, uh, it's good to be able to be comfortable, have a, have a drink nearby to uh, just wet your whistle, as it were. And, um, you, and if you do need a comfort break, it's good to be able to turn off your video and audio. Just make your excuses and say, I've got to leave for a minute, I'll be back. Turn off your video, turn off your audio. But it's good, the difference is if you tell the host that you're going to go rather than just disappear, it means you're in control, right? It means you know what you're doing. And these are all things that you've just got to practice. Okay. So, I thought that was that went fairly well. So, if uh, if I haven't blown your minds, and um, you just take a couple of breaths, 
and <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, ask you. There we go. I'm going to come back to you now. I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen, and we're going to have a have a bit of a Q and A about this. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.